it's time for another frag context. Let's find out what went into the plays made in 60 flames per second. If you haven't watched that frag video yet, check the card on the top right, or the link in the description. The first play happens right after the enemy heavy is backstabbed. This heavy pick allowed me to attack the enemy combo without much challenge. Immediately after the heavy's pick, I attempt to spearhead into the combo. The demo man's trap isn't fully set up yet, so I can use the explosion to launch myself behind them. Since the medic is in air blast range, I focus on flaring him away as fast as possible. For the reflect, the demo man fired one, two, three pipes in a row, so the fourth pipe is an easy reflect. Since I'm distracting the demo man, my heavy friend can walk in without worry and finish off the medic. This is a rather odd hold on swift water, which is pretty easily taken care of with some aggressive acts. Our demo man takes down the medic, and I swap with him and deal some damage. The engineer here should have taken me down a lot more easily with the wrangler, but since I'm not challenged by the gun, it's easy to do a hit and run and clean up our team's damage. During this uber, I'm trying to avoid damage while staying close enough to re-engage. A heavy would normally stop what I'm about to do, but since there isn't one, I can start a post-uber fight more easily. To start, I do a power jack jump to keep my speed for a little bit longer while also getting my degreaser ready. All before landing, I switch to the degreaser, air blast, and switch back to shotgun to take down the pyro. Repeat the process to get to the medic. The reflect is kind of accidental, as I'm mostly trying to air blast the medic for positioning, but it works out. Sometimes I go for reflect jumps in scrims. Sometimes they work out, but usually not. After the jump, I find the nearest target and try to take them out. In this case, it's the medic, though sometimes it's a sniper, or the soldier, or some other class. This filler reflect is simple. Before seeing me, the soldier fires constantly. It's only natural he would continue to fire this way, especially since I slip in front of him without him seeing me. I'm not sure how I got behind the red team here, but listening to the announcer, my team is about to lose anyway. May as well go for something flashy. The first flare is simple. After that, I knew that the sniper would go for the big pack on the lower left of the barn, so I shot a flare after estimating the time it would take to get there. I get through the lower area on upward last, and catch a sniper in my range. I commit fully to getting the pick, since I know that I can air blast away anyone who tries to stop me. I check through the door, and see the enemy pyro is about to go down the stairs. It's hard to see with the flames in the way, but this is why I have flames turned off during my actual gameplay. I know that this pyro wants to meet up with her combo, so I cut her off. With the pyro out of the way, I test my luck and peek back at the combo. The heavy makes the mistake of jump revving at me, which puts me in a position to push him away and go for the classic medic isolation. Here, I'm catching up with my team in the gully wash lobby. The soldier here is unaware of me, so he fires predictably. One, two, three. After, I try to help contest the push from the enemy. If the enemy had uber, I would run away instead of what I'm about to do here. Non-uber pushes through small chokes can be pretty easily stuffed by a pyro, especially if you have your team to help you. Here, I trap the demo man in for my team to shoot. It's a bit sloppy, but I do end up killing him with a reflect, stopping the enemy push for sure. On this process defense, the enemy has uber charge, and my team does not. I take some time to air blast the uber once, though I don't want to die during this uber exchange, since that's the point of uber advantage pushes. Dying to an enemy team's uber while your team does not have uber is basically a death sentence for your team's last defense. Our engineer is having a little trouble with the heavy on the left, so I thermally discourage him and head to the resupply. After the uber, I'm ready to see if there are any plays I can make during the transition. I attack lobby with my demo man. I focus on the classes that I can handle which means I push the heavy away for my demo to deal with, which he does. I don't want to commit fully to this medic pick, as I want to stay alive to protect my own medic, who now has uber advantage. Luckily, I spot the soldier and react in time to reflect his rocket, securing the kill. The next reflect is also a reaction. The spy is probably not happy with that one. After that, I meet up with my combo and check their flanks. Scott behind us kills our sniper, but I finish him off and move on. 
This is a classic upward first offensive strategy. Our soldier and demo man bomb the enemy medic in an attempt to force her to pop or drop Uber. They don't get the pop, but I get the drop, mostly because the sentry is not in a position to stop me from standing on this balcony area. It's also likely that the medic did not know I was here, as nobody was around to spot me. With the damage our team did to their medic, even the detonator's meager damage was enough to finish the job. This is an Asheville mid-fight. One of the common strategies on mid-fights is to have the combo go under the point and wrap around. My team does a good job of forcing their combo back under the point. On top of that, this team did not have anyone watching their combos back. On later mid-fights, the team adapts and has their heavy and pyro take care of it. I flank the combo and call for my team to get aggressive, which they kindly do. I focus on grabbing as much attention as possible, mostly by walking into the team as much as possible. The closer I get, the more attention I get. My WM1 doesn't actually deal that much damage here, just finishing blows. Our heavy and demo were able to do the majority of the damage before this fight even began. They are also able to deal extra damage by being able to walk in uncontested. Here I'm meeting up with my sniper friend on the way to mid. I react to the sight and sound of the soldier by bringing out my degreaser and air blasting right away. It just so happens to fit one of the usual timings of a soldier bomb, where the soldier shoots a rocket just before landing. Since I know that my heavy is with me here, I don't have to worry about maximizing my damage or reflecting every rocket. Thus, my goal is primarily to push the soldier away. So I basically spam air blast twice, and it works out. The second air blast kind of ruins the soldier's attempted escape, so I get close with the power jack jump and try to put some extra damage on the soldier. I try to catch him with another air blast, but I barely miss. The long flare was, to be honest, a guess. A happy accident, if you will. While the soldier flies away, my heavy pecks at him with the Tomislav, causing the soldier to burn out. This flank comes after a gully wash mid-fight. The enemy flank was killed or otherwise had to leave. This opening in the flank let me walk in and catch anyone still transitioning after the fight, including this pyro. The flare punch is just me aiming ahead of the pyro, holding M1, and switching the flare. Since I'm in enemy territory, I turn around after the kill to see if anyone has snuck up on me. I see the demo, but prioritize the medic who is already very close and in front of me. Sometimes you need to actively seek out reflects in dire situations. Though we can't see the time remaining in this footage, there's not much time left on the point, and my team needs to capture it. As a pyro, I know that there isn't much I can do for damage output. So I focus on finding opportunities for reflects or picks. After pushing the demo back, I notice a soldier on the left approaching the point. I look pretty distracted, which is my intention, so the soldier fires one rocket and another out of instinct. I react to the rockets and deal a ton of damage, leaving room for my team to clean up. After, I see the soldier heading into the corridor on the left. There's a 50-50 chance he'll come out on his side or ours. I guessed he would come out on our side as a last resort, and was right. Here's the process last defense from quick pyro tips, air blast positioning. I go into more detail in that video, but here's the short version. I stay under cover, air blasting as many players against the wall as possible. After the uber is over, I get aggressive and try to finish off any damage my team has done. Here's a gully wash mid fight. I focus on finding a time to cross the point and get aggressive on the enemy team. Our soldier bombs in and dies but not without dealing a lot of damage to the enemy heavy. This distraction lets me finish the heavy with a flare, and cut off the enemy's escape route. Ideally, I would have entered the fight while our soldier was fighting the heavy. With good team synergy and communication, it's very doable, but sometimes your teammates end up as bait in the end. There's another problem with my timing here. The enemy soldier bombed in and killed our medic, which is something I could have easily prevented had I not tunnel visioned onto the enemy combo. Regardless, once I've committed, I have to handle the situation as best as possible. I try to focus on pressuring the already cornered combo, dealing as much flame and flare damage as I can. With the demo man on fire, he has no choice but to stay in and burn, or go for the health pack. I fire flares based on the idea that he will try to grab some health. Since there's no heavy or pyro in this uber, I can easily maneuver around and use air blast to position the enemy the way I want. 
I put the medic in a position further from where he will want to escape to, giving me more time to kill him off. After, I bring my attention back to the demo and air blast him once to get my shot off, but let him land so my demo can finish the job. I try to get aggressive on the engineer to keep our momentum going, but I'm a little bit early. Realizing this, I crouch in midair to increase my knockback so I can escape. It's called that the pyro is weak, so I look to see if I can finish him off. Our soldier gets the engineer, so the sentry is quick to fall after. After that, I go forward to see if anyone was left behind after the push and catch the sniper. With the enemy sentry placed on the balcony, I can walk in from under the point on upward last and spawn camp. Pyro is particularly effective at spawn camping, since Pyro can control damage and position with air blast. As a Pyro pushing last, you may want to consider pushing the cart instead, as Pyro can stuff damage and keep enemies off the cart with air blast as well. I can expect players to be around this corner, but since I've only just started the spawn camp, and nobody spotted me yet, they shouldn't expect me. The scout and soldier don't quite know I'm at their door until it's too late. This is why the scout gets close enough for me to meet shot him out of existence. Literally, he disappears. This is also why the soldier panic fires, meaning that the reflect is easy to predict. One rocket here, and the next right after. A few frames after the air blast, I switch to the shotgun and finish the job. I move up the stairs to see if I can fight anyone on the balcony area. I see our spy and their heavy. I grab the heavy's attention and avoid air blasting so our spy can more easily get the stab. After this, I rotate to check the other spawn exits. It's called that the demo man is spamming main, so I move to flank him after the easy sniper pick. During this Asheville Uber exchange, I stay out of the fight. Walking in would force our medic to flash me, reducing the amount of time our Uber lasts giving the enemy the upper hand. When the uber is nearly over, I start moving forward for the post-uber fight. I air blast the demo away, separating him from his combo and heals. Our team has heavily damaged the heavy, but the heavy has to commit to the fight since he can't really run away as a heavy and his team is running out of time to capture the point. This makes him an easy pick for me. The rest is just cleanup. With the flank pushed back and the heavy distracted for long enough, I can get aggressive on the enemy combo safely. With my demo doing the majority of the damage, it's a simple job to clean up. The boost from my Scorch shot gives me just enough time to catch the medic out. Keep in mind that getting aggressive when your team holds the point on King of the Hill is generally preserved for situations when you can kill the medic or a larger portion of their team. The enemy team has shorter respawn times, since they don't have the point. Trading kills is only worthwhile for important classes such as the medic. Thanks for watching! Share the video around if you liked it, that'd be really cool. And subscribe if you want more content, that'd also be pretty cool. See you on the next one. Bye bye!